besides, Mr. Honeywell and I would give your account our personal attention. Just draw up the contract and I'll sign it. Oh, now, I wouldn't be too hasty, Mr. Rivers. Our competitors may be bigger, but when it comes to personal service, you'll what? You heard me. But on one condition, the papers have to be ready in 24 hours. Well, that doesn't give us much time. That's my deadline. You see, my daughter Cindy's in love with some fortune hunter. She won't even tell me who he is. So I want to whisk her off to Europe to give her a chance to forget this ridiculous infatuation. But we have to go over a lot of details together. Look, Mr. Rivers, I've got an idea. The apartment next to mine is vacant. Now, why don't you check out of your hotel and move in there? Then if any difficulties arise, you'll be right where I can put my finger on you. Good idea. You make the arrangements while I go hire a couple of private detectives. Private detective? It's just so Cindy's boyfriend doesn't contact her before we leave for Europe. Well, this is one deal you'll have to admit that I handle like, like a... a king size lunatic. Do you realize that you just gave him squatter's rights next to 110 pounds of human TNT who could blow up this whole deal quicker than you could save Margie Albright? Honey, well, Margie doesn't know anything about this. And she's not going to, understand? You get her out of town until this deal is signed. And that's an order. Margie, it's happened. I'm ruined. You mean you got a job? Oh, worse than that. I've just severed all relationship with the U.S. government. This is my last unemployment check. Freddie, that's impossible. Why, you're a charter member of that club. Yeah, well, I got news for you. They just revoked my charter. I gotta get a job, for a while at least, until I can become eligible for unemployment again. Well, in that case, you can start rehearsing right now. I'm storing all of Dad's winter sports equipment. You can take it down to the basement for me. Oh, fine. There, now. You go on ahead. I'll get the rest of it. It's all my fault. Dad, are you feeling all right? Yeah. Honey, I should have realized it before, but, but you're in a rut with Freddie. Uh, you've got to get out and, and meet new men. I do. I mean, I do. Yes, and I know just the place. How about a weekend at the Holiday Hotel in Maryland? Holiday Hotel? Why, the eligible men are crawling over that place like a bucket of ants. That's why you wouldn't let me go there last year. Margie. I'm man enough to admit that I've made a mistake. I've seen the light. Well, who am I to argue with Edison? I'll be packing on my way in an hour before the light changes. <laughs> Don't worry, Mr. Rivers. No one can possibly get in to see your daughter now. I have an extra man staked out to cover the rear door. What about the phone? That's been disconnected. Fine. I hate to do this to my own daughter, but it's for her own good. Oh, excuse me. I was just looking for my girl. It, what is she, a female flying saucer? Please. She's in Suite 10 C. Uh, can you tell me where the windows are? Well, that's the apartment right next to ours. It, the window should be right up there. It ought to be right about there. Look out! It's a note from my girl, Cindy Lou. She loves me. 
demonstrative type, isn't she? Well, you don't understand. Her father has her locked up. And according to this note, he's got two private eyes watching to make sure we don't get together. In this day and age? Why, that's ridiculous. And the worst of it is that I've only got a two-day pass. I've just got to see her. Now, let's see. Her apartment's right next to ours. Maybe I can help you. Gee, that'd be great. But I wouldn't want to ruin your plans. Now, look, Admiral, I can leave any time. You're the one who has to make the fast pass. <laughs> Cindy Lou, it's me, Tony. Tony, where are you? Here, honey, I'm in the next apartment. We're going to saw through. But Tony, the detectives will hear you. Don't worry, honey, we've got that covered too. Okay. Just have to hammer the rest of the way. Well, it's broken, but good. That lets out any more hammering. What now? We can ram our way through. That wall should be weak enough to give by now. One, two... A great... I don't want to ruin my dress. Okay. One... <laughs> Honey. Two's company and three the crowd. <laughs> well, I guess I'd better clean up this rubbish. trying to tell me you slept through all that racket? Of course not, silly. I woke up the minute you put the key in the door. I declare you like to scare me out of six months' growth. I mean the hammering sounds. And that crash a few seconds ago. Lieutenant, I don't rightly know just what you thought you heard, but I can give you the word of a southern lady that none of those noises originated in this apartment. Cross my heart. Well, they had to come from someplace. I'll check next door. Those noises I heard coming from this apartment. Noises? Oh, you mean like this? No, no, louder. Like hammering. Oh, oh, you mean those loud hammering noises. Yeah. Well, that was my Spanish dance routine. Most girls are light on their feet, but I'm different. Margie the elephant girl, they call me. Margie, you were wonderful. I just called me the dancing Cupid. Oh, that junk in the living room. I'd better go clean it up. As you were, sailor. And now, if you'll just get me the rest of those papers, we can have the contract drawn up in a couple of hours. Fine. Incidentally, don't say anything to my daughter. 
I haven't told her we're going to Europe yet. I think it'll be better if I break it to her when we're alone. at home, all right. I'll be right with you. Take your time, Mr. Rivers. <laughs> all right. What happened? Well, that's what I'd like to know. I could have sworn that that... What's that? Cindy Lou, what in tarnation are you doing there? Who, me? Well, you see, I, I, I just washed my hair, and, and I was going to put it up when you dropped the broom. I mean, when I, I dropped my bobby pin and the window was open and, and they blew in here. So I, I'll be seeing you. Cindy Lou, where are your manners? Say hello to our guest, Mr. Albright. Oh, excuse me, Mr. Albright. I'm mighty happy to know you, but I just got to get my hair dry before I catch my... I catch my day. Of course, Miss Rivers. I'll be back in a jiffy. You just have to excuse her. You know how these young girls are. Oh, uh, yes. As a matter of fact, she reminds me of my little Margie. Now, remember, you've got a cold and you're drying your hair. See you later, honey pie. We've got to get out of here fast. I didn't know Dad was a friend of Mr. Rivers. He mustn't find out I'm helping you. Come on. Enemy destroyer on the starboard bow, submerge. Oh, Margie, what are you doing here? Oh, hi, Dad. Well, I had an awful time deciding what to wear, and, and, and then when I finally did decide, there wasn't enough room in the suitcase. <laughs> Isn't that just like a woman? Well, there's only one thing to do. Pack your extra things in my Navy bag. I'll get it for you. <laughs> What's that? What? That. Oh, oh, that. Dad. Would you believe me if I told you we had termites? Not unless there's a new breed that wears hobnail boots. I'm afraid of that. Well, Dad, I may as well come clean. There's a sailor in the closet. Well, that's more like it. Juan? Now, Dad, control yourself. I just couldn't stand to see the poor thing roaming the streets alone and friendless in a cruel, cold world. All we did was talk about his girl. It was strictly platonic. Platonic? Is that why you hid him in the closet? Well, gee, Dad, I was afraid you might not understand. But I can see how wrong I was. Well, you're the most wonderful, understanding father a girl ever had. <laughs> well, that's more like it. Come on out, son. Any friend of Margie's, with one unemployed exception, is welcome here. Thank you, sir. It was getting a little crowded in there. <laughs> Isn't that silly? Margie thinking that I wouldn't understand. <laughs> Lipstick? This you call platonic? <laughs> Furthermore, none of this would have happened if it weren't for you. It's all your fault. Me? What did I do? Oh, if you weren't so obnoxious, I wouldn't have advised Margie to go out with other men. Then she would have met that sailor and fallen in love at first sight. <laughs> Gee, you must really hate me. <laughs> That's the understatement of the year. And what's more, if you don't help me nip this romance in the bud, I'll massacre you. Well, you know I'd do anything I can to help Margie, but how am I going to compete with the whole U.S. Navy? It's simple. Use a Marlon Brando technique. Get tough. Now, supposing I was a sailor, what would you do? In two words, abandon ship. I said use the Brando technique. Show a little gumption. Flex your muscles. Get tough. Slap him around. You mean like that? You call that a slap? Hard. Gee, I'm beginning to feel the part. <laughs> And furthermore, if you ever try to come between Margie and me again... Oh! Well, how did I do? Oh, you idiot. Save your strength for the sailor. Now get over to the apartment and chaperone Margie down to the Holiday Hotel and don't let her out of your sight until I get there. Okay. Oh, uh, I almost forgot. What's my salary? What? You mean I've, I've got to hire you to woo Margie? Well, I'm cheaper than Brando. <laughs> oh, there you are, you vulture. 
Now, there'll be a private eye waiting outside the apartment, but he's expecting you. Oh, so you were positive you could talk me into it, huh? Well, there's one other condition. You've got to promise to fire me in three weeks so I can go back on unemployment. He's still out there. Who would have thought that my dad would hire the extra eye of your dad's private eye to keep an eye on me? Tony! I hope you didn't mind me dropping in like this. It was the only way I could get past that flat foot. Tony, the most terrible things happened. Dad's taking me to Europe. I don't know when I'll ever see you again. Oh, no. I knew we should have gotten married when we had the chance, instead of waiting and trying to get your father's consent. The ship may be sinking, but we can still take to the lifeboats. All you have to do is elope. Well, that would be wonderful. But can we get away with it? Oh, it'll be a cinch. Now, you just slip back through the closet and get packed, and then we'll all duck out the way Tony came in. Remember, Freddy boy, you're Marlon Brando. <laughs> you don't think we'll have any trouble getting married, do you? Well, you don't have to wait for a license in Maryland. I'll telephone the Holiday House so they can have a Justice of the Peace standing by. <laughs> Freddy, what are you doing here? Margie, this is no time for talk. I'm a man of action. Okay, Swab Jackie, blow. Margie, who is this twerp? Twerp, huh? I said, pull! Freddy, you knocked him out. That drip was unconscious when he came in. Now you just relax, and I'll explain everything when we get back. Mr. Rivers, I can't tell you how much I appreciate your coming along. Nonsense, all right. I'm sure you'd do the same for me if we were trying to stop my daughter from getting married. Well, don't I get any credit? I'm the one who spread the word as soon as I came to. The Brando technique. <laughs> well, can I help it if he used the Rocky Marciano technique? <laughs> oh, it's locked. I'm the Justice of the Peace. Can I help you, gentlemen? Oh, uh, yes. Uh, uh, we're looking for a girl and a sailor. They're, they're eloping. <laughs> I just married them. They're upstairs in suite 700. Oh, we're too late. Oh, I told you that if anything went wrong, I'd feed you to the buzzards. Now, take it easy, Mr. Albright. Maybe it's a mistake. Maybe it isn't even legal. I'll go talk to the Justice of the Peace. Uh, take, take it easy, Albright. Oh, you're right. I've got to keep calm. Now, now, you wait here, and I'll go up and talk to Margie and see if I can convince her that she's making a great mistake. Margie, you were wonderful. We'll never forget what you've done for us. Say, married life is doing things for you already. Yeah, you don't know what a relief it'll be to kiss a wife without feeling her father is breathing down my neck. Well, see you later. Tony, darling, I thought you'd never get back. Well, I had to get Margie squared away. After all, she's been so understanding about everything. Why, that bell-bottom bigamist. <laughs> Why didn't you tell me? Well, gee, Dad, I didn't know how you'd feel about it. But now that everything's worked out so well... Oh, oh my poor darling, how am I going to break it to you? Well, what are you talking about? Oh, honey, you're going to find out sooner or later, so I might as well give it to you straight from the shoulder. That seagoing Casanova of yours is in love with another woman. Well, of course he is. You mean... you mean you don't mind? Mind? Why, I've encouraged it from the start. But, but he's your husband. He's what? 
Oh, Dad, you're all mixed up. Tony didn't marry me. He married Cindy, the daughter of your friend who moved in next door. I just came along as a witness. Well, why didn't you tell me? I was just about to slit my throat. <laughs> so he married Cindy. <laughs> Mr. Rivers' daughter. Oh, Margie, get me a razor. Oh, wait till Honeywell finds out about this. Rivers was just about to sign a million-dollar contract with us on the condition that he could get his daughter out of this country before she got married. Oh, no. You mean I goofed again? And here I thought I was doing a wonderful thing, helping two kids in love. Oh, it's not your fault, honey. I should have told you what's cooking. Look, it's a woman's prerogative to get a man to change his mind. And I think I know just how we can do it. Now, Margie, if you're up to another one of your harebrained stunts... But, Dad, what have we got to lose that we haven't lost already? Now, you just listen to me. All you have to do is to get Mr. Rivers up here. And then we'll... Here they come. Hide in the closet, quick. I'm glad you're standing by, Mr. Rivers. I, I, I wouldn't be able to face him without you. Don't worry. We'll get him to annul the marriage. Just takes a firm hand, that's all. The door's open, honey. Come on in. <laughs> Dad, what are you doing here? So, I've caught up with you at last. Where's that sea serpent of a sailor? I'll tear him limb from limb. Oh, no, Dad, you can't. We're married. If he's still alive when I get through with him, I'll have the marriage annulled. Oh, but, Dad, you don't understand. Oh, please, sir, whoever you are, try to make him listen to reason. Margie has a friend of your father. I assure you, he's only doing this for your own good. He loves you. And I love him. But I also love Tony. Margie, you're coming home with me. But it would break Tony's heart. If you don't, it'll break your father's heart. Oh, Dad. You're making it so difficult for me. Either way, it'll be a life of misery. Tears will get you no place, Margie. There's only one way out of this. You're right. And I'm taking it. Please, sir, give this to Tony. He'll understand. It's better to die for love than live without it. Wait, Margie. Don't be intimidated, Mr. Rivers. She's only bluffing. She'll kill herself, Albright. What kind of a father are you, anyway? The same kind that you are. I won't allow my daughter to defy me and marry a mere sailor. A mere sailor? Why, they're the backbone of the nation. Any man in his right mind would be proud to have a sailor for a son-in-law. Well, it's easy for you to say that, but what if the shoe were on the other foot and it was your daughter? If my daughter had gumption enough to elope with her sweetheart, then I'd be positive they were really in love. Oh, sir, do you really mean that? If I were your daughter, you'd let me marry a sailor like Tony? Of course I would. What kind of a man do you think I am, anyway? Well, we're sure gonna find out. <whistles> okay, open the hatch. Cindy, what are you doing with Margie's husband? Mr. Rivers, I'd like you to meet the real Mrs. Tony Brown, your daughter, Cindy. Well, I'll be all tied. And I have been, too, by my own lasso. Welcome to the family, son. Mr. Albright, Mr. Albright, you can have the marriage annulled. It's not legal. Margie gave a phony name. Freddie, I didn't get married. It was Cindy. You mean I still have a chance? Oh, Margie! <laughs> I just got a card from Tony and Cindy, and they're having a wonderful honeymoon in Europe. Yeah, and the Riversdale is working out swell. Even Freddie made out all right. Thanks to you, he's back on unemployment again. When you come right down with Margie, everyone got something out of this deal but you. Oh, don't be too sure of that, Dad. Tony was so grateful that he gave my phone number to all the good-looking sailors in the fleet. <laughs> well, <laughs> that's my little Margie. <laughs> 